I'm um, Louise Emmett, I'm the Director of Theranostics and Nuclear Medicine at St Vincent's Hospital in Sydney and Professor of Medicine at the University of New South Wales. The incidence of prostate cancer, like many cancers, is increasing. Uh, one of the good things about prostate cancer is the majority of men who have prostate cancer are actually curable. So we're picking it up early, we're detecting it early, they have definitive treatment for that and there's a good range of options for definitive treatment. And so the majority of men uh, end up managing prostate cancer extremely well and there's a small proportion of men in whom prostate cancer does become um, a big problem for them. They end up having multiple treatments and about 3,000 men each year in Australia die from prostate cancer. So it's actually a super cool bench top to bedside journey, PSMA PET. It's actually a growth agent on the cell. It's a receptor, it's not just sitting there doing nothing on the cancer cell. The cell uses it to grow as a proliferate, what we call a proliferative agent. Not all cancer cells are very aggressive. Some are actually pretty benign and some are really aggressive. It's the aggressive ones or the ones that are capable of growing faster that express the PSMA receptor. So we knew about the receptor on the prostate cancer cell surface for a long time, but we weren't able to target it very well. And then the University of Heidelberg, around the late 1990s, early 2000s, started working on this small peptide, so it's a protein that they labelled uh, to a, a nuclear warhead or a PET agent, and they were able to get really good uptake within, within the cell, the prostate cancer cell itself. And that was called PSMA11, this very small peptide that they used. And we got these beautiful images in mice about 2012, 2011, and then they moved it into their clinic very, very early. So the game changer for that was uh, it, it, it concentrates within the prostate cancer cell. We inject it intravenously, concentrated within the prostate cancer cell really very well. So we got a very nice bright signal from the prostate cancer cell and washed out from everywhere else. So it meant that in these mice and in their early studies, they could see the cancer wherever it was, whether it was still in the prostate, whether it had spread to lymph nodes or bone or liver, wherever it was, they could see it. So really exciting first images that came out of Germany. And then they did an incredible thing. They didn't try and patent the agent, they released it for use around the world. We were able to access it just from a chemical company uh, at St Vincent's in 2014 and started labelling it within a prospective trial that we started here. And the very first um, scans that we did in 2014 were men who had prostate cancer, had had a radical prostatectomy. Their PSA, we knew the cancer had come back but we didn't know where it was. And we did a direct comparison with a, um, an agent that we were using at that stage called fluoromethylcholine, but which wasn't very good. Um, and in the first 10 men, every single patient, not only did we find the cancer, but we found it at more sites than we did on the choline. And then we biopsied all of those men and it was true. It was, you know, the cancer was actually there. It was, it was a game changing moment for, for us and was also the first prospective trial in the world that actually did this comparing to standard of care. So we had to stop our clinical program in 2015 and move entirely from fluoromethylcholine, which is what we've been using, to PSMA11, this new agent, because it was so good at detecting disease. Uh, in these men. And then we moved from there, not just looking at men who had what we call biochemical recurrence uh, of their prostate cancer after radical prostatectomy, but also in staging. And we also started using it in men who had more advanced disease to actually treat their cancer. So it's been a hugely exciting journey.